I, I look back on my life over the last 25 years and I know in my 20s I was a highly motivated, money motivated individual. Uh, I really, really uh, had great aspirations to make a lot of money and I had reasons for that. I shared a little bit of this on stage yesterday and so I felt like, you know what, I felt like I was actually on a stage that was like a big confessional. Like, you know, uh, explaining to people what my why was for wanting to build my wealth. Uh, everybody's got their own reasons. Sometimes uh, people can judge our reasons for wanting to attract a lot of, a lot of money to us. Um, but, um, you know, I, I don't want to live in fear of judgment. I just want to be real uh, because whatever drove me to want to do what I did, the end game was worth it. Like the end result, the life that I'm living right now with my wife and my boys and uh, my family and friends and my company, uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. So how I got here, it just is what it is. So um, when I was 28 years old, I had been really driven throughout my 20s. I tried a few network marketing businesses really, really hard, didn't make a lot of money, but I learned a lot. Uh, I was grinding hard in my real estate career and I was, I got up to a six figure income, which was, which was good, but not great. Um, but for me, I wanted to, you know, everybody wants love and respect. Every, like everybody, every human being wants love and respect. And so I felt like if I could have a lot of money and I could drive a Ferrari and I could live in a beautiful home and I can afford nice things that that would attract uh, people to me. And um, whether, whether that's right or wrong, it's not, that's not really the, 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 the topic here. It is that's what drove me. And because I found a business where the only way that I could actually make money is by serving and helping and impacting people, the beautiful thing about that is I was driven to make money but the only way I could get it is by helping others. So I chose to help a lot of people so that I could be self-served in my own goals of acquiring a lot of money so that I could use it for what I thought would be to um, you know, d garner love and respect. Now, I feel like the respect that I have received and so much that I was given last night and yesterday at the event, uh, all the people came up to me and shared their thoughts and, and I was signing books. It was so cool because not a single person came up to me and said, Brian, I really love you or I, I really respect you because of your money. They all had great things to say to me, but it had nothing to do with the money. It had to do with the impact I was having, the things I was teaching, the, uh, the kindness that I was portraying, the, the care that I have for other people and their success and their goals. And so I, as I sit here in this hotel room today, just thinking about the weekend and thinking back on the last 21 years of my life, it really got me thinking. Um, a friend of mine posted uh, recently on Facebook, you know, money should serve you, but it's not a good master. Uh, master your money and use it for good. And I, I, really, I really have grown to, to live that and to love that and to appreciate it. And so, um, and let me be real with you. Uh, do I want to make more money? Absolutely. Um, not, do I need to make more money? I don't. Uh, I've got enough money to last me and my family many lifetimes. I've done very well financially bringing money in the door and I've put overalls on my money and it's been working great for me. So for me, money is not the driver, um, meaning I don't need it uh, to make my life any better. Any more money is not gonna move the needle for me. Uh, I, we, I make decisions, whatever I want, whatever my family wants, we can do that. But I do wanna make more money. And I think back to a conversation that I had with uh, my mentor and friend, Paul J. Meyer, who uh, some of you may know who he is. He's a grandfather to the personal development industry, author and sold over $2 billion of his uh, books and training programs, uh, founder of Success Motivation Institute. Uh, he gave $450 million to charity while he was alive. His estate, after he's been gone for over a decade, still gives and makes the world a better place, even uh, posthumous. So I, I, for me, uh, he said, because I asked him, I said, what motivates you to keep on um, working? And not, not really working. He, it's not like he was labor. It wasn't like he had to go dig ditches. But 
what, what, I asked him what drove him to keep on building his businesses and helping people and so forth. And he said, I want to make as much money as I can while I'm alive because it's all God's by right of creation. And I just want to be able to make as much money as I can because I'm good at it so that I can use it to make other people's lives better. And guys, uh, I want you to know, um, uh, because you know, when you see, maybe, maybe you see me posting a picture, which I don't do much, but a picture with me in my fancy cars, or me on a, a great family vacation that costs a lot of money, or me at my house, or whatever the case is. I, I just want people, uh, because everybody jumps to judgment, and I want people to know my heart, because that's what, where it is. You know, what Paul Meyer taught me is, Brian, if you're good at making money, then go do good for others and go make a lot of money so that you can also continue to use that money to do good. What a great happy sandwich, right? You make money by doing good, and then when you get the money, you can go do good for people. How cool is that? And so that's why I love, love, love what I do with my life. And we all have one life to live. Some people just um, you know do other things. Um, but I, 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 I heard... Uh, an old friend, Sushi Mike, who uh, I knew from 15, 16 years ago in my company. And I saw him for the first time in over a decade at the event yesterday. And he made a statement. He said, somebody asked him when he was going through some tough times. Um, he said, but basically, how long is that going to be your story? And I thought about that when he said that on stage telling his testimony. I said, how long... Is that going to be your story? And then I think about all the people that I, that I know, that I love, that I work with in my business. And there's a lot of people out there right now that have a sad story. They are struggling with something, struggling with an addiction, struggling with a lack of finances, struggling with uh, a, a, uh, a marriage that's not going well. Um, and sometimes we can hold on to our story and that story can just be our permanent story because we're holding on to it too tight. And so my question to you is, what is your story? And how long is that going to remain your story? Because we can all change our story anytime that we choose to do that. And so, you know, are you struggling right now? Okay. Are you holding on to the struggle? Are you focusing on the struggle? Because whatever you focus on expands. If you focus on a lack, you'll have more lack. Focus on abundance, you'll start having more abundance. So my hope for everybody here today, as I can maybe uh, impart a message to you, is whatever your story is right now, it does not have to be the last chapter of your book. You're writing the book of your life right now, and you can choose right now today to go ahead and end this chapter and begin the next chapter with a brand new blank page and write a new chapter. Write, write your story how you want to write it. What, as I said on the stage yesterday, people plan more, they spend more time planning a two-week vacation than they do planning and designing their life. Have you ever sat down, if you're a single person, have you ever sat down in quietness and just thought and designed your life? Have you, if you're married, if you have a, a family, have you sat down with your family and said, hey, how do we want our life to go? What life do we want to live? Let's design how it's going to look. You should absolutely spend some time today on Sunday to plan your day, but also plan your life. Like, think about it. Like, what do you want to do? What are the things that you, if money was not an object, if you had plenty of money, what would you be doing? And when you say, this is what we would like to do, we'd like to live in this town, in this house, our kids would go to this school, we would go take on these vacations, we would take on these uh, philanthropic uh, projects, or we'd go on these mission trips, or we'd, uh, wh whatever you do, what would you do if money was not an object? This is all circling back, by the way, to money. Follow me here. So design your life, the perfect life that you would want to live. A life of fulfillment, a life of joy, a life of happiness, or you're no longer stressed because you got a job with long hours or a long commute. Maybe you, like, you don't like your job anymore. Maybe you wouldn't have that be a part of your life design. Maybe if you, you'd have a, a different career. Maybe you work from home, no more commute, no, no more rush hour traffic. What, so design whatever your life you would like to live. And then again, with money being no object, now of course money is an object. Money is a barrier that holds most people back from the life they would rather be living. So when I say that you know I was money driven, 
uh, for my own reasons. Um, I also wanted to make sure that when I wanted to design my life, that I was not under anybody's thumb. I was not relying on anybody else to, to pay for it, that I could actually design my life and I could actually make it happen. And so my hope for you is that you have a good relationship with money. And that's why I wrote the book a few years ago, Money Mindset. Have a good relationship, a healthy relationship, that you appreciate what money can do, that you decide that you wanna master your money in a good, in a good mutual, uh, respectful relationship. Like money doesn't rule you, okay? Uh, but you actually have a relationship where you can uh, attract money to you. You can let it serve you for good purposes and use it wisely. And if you are an entrepreneur like I am and you look at money and say, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about building a business because I want to generate cash flow. I want to invest it wisely. I want to do well. Guess what? There's nothing wrong with that. And there are a lot of people, guys. There's a lot of people that jump to judgment. I'm sure there's many people that have never even spoken the words to me, but they thought, oh, look at this guy, Brian. All he cares about is money. All he cares about is fancy cars. All he cares about is his home he gets to live in. Guys, don't live in fear of judgment. Everybody's got judgment. We all do it. We're all human. You judge, I judge, we all judge. But don't let anybody else judging you hold you back from a, having a plan to attract a lot of money in your life so that you can use it to serve your life and to serve others better because you'll be happy and you'll put a lot of happiness into other people's lives as well. So that's my, that's, that's just my confession today. That's just, that, that's, that's, I'm just, I wanted to share my heart with you so you understand what, what, how, what makes me tick, I'll understand how my, my mind and my heart works um, if you uh, feel like you can relate in some way to what I just share with you, uh, I would encourage you to embrace it uh, because I have no regrets whatsoever. No regrets. If somebody asked me, hey, what would you go back and do differently? Nothing. Any failures I had, I got to learn from them. The successes I had, I got to enjoy them. And all I look to do is pay it forward and help as many people to improve their lives and to be great servants so they can go out there and pay it on and pay it forward to other people in the future. Have a great day, guys. We appreciate, I just appreciate you all um, letting me share my heart with you today and hopefully it landed on you in a good way. Take care.